thank you for for the introduction and the opportunity to speak because this is also a slightly different talk than most at Bosk. Uh, so actually, I have a flash talk, but I, I have a manuscript, so I'm just going to spend the next uh, four or five minutes trying to convince you to go read the manuscript uh, because because the problem I think is not new. So what we're we're looking at is tools. So that's code that we release for other people to use on their problems. Um, and they're built by trainees, either students who graduate or, you know, postdocs who are on short-term contracts. And once they leave, you know, as Titus Brown says, I'm the, you know, I as the PI, I'm the only person who doesn't leave the lab. And so I'm the maintainer of last resort. And so as the tools are useful over a long-term, even decades, but the original author has left. So what can we do about this? And so what we, what we, what I want to say is what we're doing is we front load the effort and then we make the software sustainable. And I'm just going to give you sort of a cartoon type picture of what I mean by this. So, you know, here we have time ever marching forward and, you know, and sort of this is, you know, the project starts, eventually we get out a preprint and then a paper and sort of the effort in developing and putting, you know, it starts really high. And then, you know, after the preprint, maybe there's a bit of feedback and then, development is done. And so this is the traditional model of how things work. And a lot of our institutional infrastructure works, you know, expecting that this is what papers look like, right? And this is what uh, what science looks like. And then maybe you have a different paper, but that's a completely new project, right? When But when we have a tool, you know, ideally you put, you put it out there and people start using it and there's interest. And soon after, you know, you have support requests because people want to, you know, get help. It doesn't run on their system, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and eventually you get citations and maybe uh, and there's maybe a big lag there as well. But, you know, citations is what pays the bills in the end somehow. But um, and so so what the problem here is, is that this, you know, the support requests come much later. So what we're trying to do is, first of all, go back here, you know, and we, you know, we, we try to have a test release. You know, we talk about it at conferences, a bit of social media, etc. And what we're trying to do is trying to get interest and usage to start, you know, going up a little bit earlier. Um, partly also, you know, maybe we try to shift the citations a little bit, uh, a little bit as well. Uh, but more importantly, we, we want to do things so that the support effort is much higher at the, at the peak uh, and then can go down over time. And so we, we decouple the, the interest from the support effort, right? So this is this is not what I wanted to do. I'm oh, sorry. So does it, so it sounds great, right? But you know, does it work? Great. Um, and I, so I, we do have a track record of doing it. Um, and so in the, in the manuscript, I, I go a little bit over, you know, some of the ideas. I'm just going to illustrate a couple of methods. Um, but for example, uh, so we have this library Mahatas for uh, Im image analysis. So it was, the first commit to the repository is 2008, uh, and still today someone emailed me about it. So it still has usage, you know, it's still sort of a couple of citations a month. So, you know, it's sort of stationary, but, but you know, if people are using it, we're still maintaining it. And so in a couple, uh, couple of months ago or a month ago, you know, NumPy 2 came out. And so we had to, we had to update it. And because things are set up correctly, so this was, a two-step process. So first of all, just add there um, the NumPy 2 to the test suite. A bunch of things fail. And so, but you know, it's just an hour of work. Just the test suite is complete. So it's very easy to identify the points where, okay, um, here. And then, so it was a very easy update. Another thing we do um, and that is, so users often have a support request. So this was a user um, and frankly, it was their fault. So they, 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 they put in a file that was misformatted um, and they made a mistake and then they got this horrendous error message because the part, right? Um, and so we told the user, oh, we think your file is wrong. And they said, oh, thanks. And they, they actually proactively closed the issue. Um, but then we also added code that at least the next the next user that's facing that issue, you know, will get the message saying, you know, you know file XYZ cannot be parsed because of on line 37, right? Uh, and so hopefully this will be a, a much better experience for the user and also they'll never have to email us. So it will also be a much better experience for us. So it's win-win, win-win, you know, so to summarize, so our idea is that we're front loading this effort um, so that this code, code that we put out for people to use, we managed to decouple 
usage and keep you know keep citations going even as the support effort you know it's not truly zero but it goes down over time and it's and it's sustainable so this was a lot of this was uh, actually this started on social media so there was tommy macklin on mastodon we were having a discussion and he's i said oh maybe i should write and he was like yeah you should write something up for a journal and so this is how it how it started uh there's no specific funding but the australian research council funds funds uh funds me so thanks thanks to them and thank you